cannot rotten. Mm -mm. No, don't remove your sock. Oh, I needed to cut my nail. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This girl mm -hmm. can do anything. Mm -hmm. What would you say? Thank you, mommy. Who's baby are you? Me. Mommy. Yes. Who's mommy are you? I'm Gigi's mommy. Can you say, can you say, who's baby are you? Who's baby are you? I am mommy's baby. <laughs> mommy, and I have a lot, a lot of things for you. It's a balloon! Where is it? It's here. What does it do? It 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 cooks something. And then there. And how about there? Uh it's the oven. Mm -hmm. It's in the, the oven. oven. For what? For for baking some cake. Yeah, I'm taking yes, that. <laughs> Can you smile? So here we are, you're seeing Gigi walking, she's talking. I mean, it's, I, I know I might not know the feeling, but then again, it definitely had to feel so good. So Gigi's walking, she's able maybe to go to school. How, how have you handled the whole process, the whole transition up until where she is right now? Wait, 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 wait. Uh, for lack of a better word, <laughs> You know, there's some uh, there's some uh, experiences or other feelings that mm -hmm. you, you 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 don't have the right words to to to, to put in. Mm -hmm. It has been awesome. It has been good. So by by the time G now is walking, I'm having a different nanny. Mm -hmm. Always very optimistic. Mm -hmm. She'll walk the baby some road that is very steep. She wants to see her walk. Mm -hmm. So it was beautiful because Gina walked at um, two years nine months. Two years, nine months. Mm. We are saying walking, any walking, putting bear. Mm. So it was beautiful. Though not stable, mm. she, was, she was like, Mommy, I can do it, I can do it. Just allow me walk. So she would fall, stand up, mm. walk. From, from what I can pick from that statement, um, mm. does she understand? I think kind of, the, the, there's a way that kid is, uh, there's a way she's, uh, I say she's extra, in the sense that she has this, uh, um, is it sixth or seventh sense? She feels things uh, before they happen, or she can feel things as an adult. So she knows, Mommy, I'm walking, I'm doing it, and this is my first time doing this. So she gets excited. And uh, she's a kid who needs affirmations. Like, you have to be, you can do it, yes, you did it. So when you do like this, she does it even better. So there are things she feels, and then sometimes I used to be like, oh, is this a kid? Is this an adult, <laughs> or, or was or, or was my baby exchanged for something else? Or uh, sometimes I could laugh with the neuro when he calls, and then I'm like, Doc, what did you do in theater? Did you just put something in the brain or something? So and we laugh about it, because there's a way she brings out things mm -hmm. and expresses herself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you and I know at that age. Yeah. What we were doing, so definitely a three year old <laughs> who expresses herself like you know, this is what I want, and I want it this way, and this offends me. This, so it's it's a whole lot of things. Yeah. So that's why I said I can't exactly put the feeling, mm -hmm. but it, it, it's, it's a warm and nice feeling altogether. So you said she started working at two years and nine, nine months, months. they're about. So when she got to her very first birthday, because I'm sure mm -hmm. um, you had people with uh, certain opinions, maybe some would, could tell you she yeah. wouldn't make it maybe to a year mm -hmm. or two. Mm -hmm. How was it for you? You know, this is, <laughs> she's one year old. Well, it's laughable. <laughs> I, have a, I have a brother, mm -hmm. he's my brother, so you don't have to be blood to be brother or sister, yeah, yeah, so yeah. I have a brother. 
uh, his name is we call him Zappa, but he's Frank. Mm -hmm. So his first shoot, he did it with pictures before she was even born. So at one year, he was there. Like I think he bonded, he bonded with this kid mm -hmm. when I was expectant, because you know. He, by then, um, he used to play rugby at the same time do photography, but then the photography had not really. Yeah, yeah so he could come from the field, ah, sis, we're hungry, we need to eat. So, like, we were close during that period uh, up to the time this baby came. I threw a party. <laughs> Where? A bash. I, I don't know. I just invited friends. They came with friends or friends. And I think that first birthday was for people to come and say, oh, is this baby? How far is this baby? You know, there are those who came to just see, what the hell is this lady doing with this kind of kid who has a big head, a small body? They came. They, they were there, but you know, you, you cannot single out. But Even we the had... ones that you said you lost. Yes. Because of your baby. Yeah, they came. They came. So you're having friends, you're inviting friends, we're inviting friends. Mm -hmm. uh, they came to see which kind of... There are those who would comment, ah, this kid is, looks like paper, this kid is, you know. Mm -hmm. And then I didn't allow these things to get to me. But they so came. You, you, you had the comments. I had the comments. What will I do? It's their opinion, not my opinion. They are not good. You know, they are not yeah. good. There are those who would ask me, Winnie, if, if you, had a, you were given a chance, would you, give, uh, would you want to have an, a normal baby? And then I'm like... What normal are you talking about? Because <laughs> the only normal I know and understand is this. Yeah. So if I could uh, undergo through the same process, I would still want my baby this way. So I don't understand normal in this context. You know, somebody asking me that question openly. Because I had even people come to the house immediately. I, this baby came. Some just came to see what kind of... They went, sorry, like, oh, we need would just... I've allowed this baby to die when you would have just, you know. Really? And then, I'm, and then you're like, okay. Then, uh, you know, something funny about me is I will, I will still invite you. I'll bring you on board because um, I'm a person who forgives. When I forgive, I forgive and forget. But I be cautious. But I'll forgive you and you'll still eat at my table. But I know my limits. So I threw a party. Where? <laughs> Even my mom and dad were like, what the hell are you doing? What is this? And then I'm like, you know, you don't understand. You know, if, if there's a thing you can do to make, to make up for the lost time, I call it lost time, I will do it. So it was a nice birthday. Um, since then, Zappa has been taking pictures and then my kid only knows Uncle Zappa. You can't take her pictures. You can't take her somewhere that you're going to do a shoot. She'll tell you, mommy, no. It's only Uncle Zappo who can take my pictures. And if he's busy, we can schedule a day. You know, she gives you that. Yeah. So we've had her birthdays all along. And I can count uh, the people who were in the first birthday were not the same on the second, or not the same on the third, or not the same on the fourth. That tells you a whole lot. It's a, dis it's, it's a disconnect kind of connection. Okay. I, I don't know. Any, in the sense that there are those who came to see how she is. There are those who left, maybe because the bad things they said and you know, God has just fixed things. Because you know, a kid who is three years and is able to speak fluent English and explain her feelings and her emotions, put them out there. Kiswahili, she knows it. A vernacular kikisi, she hears everything. She can talk a bit, but when you're having a conversation, she can hear and do things. It's, it's, it's God. You and I know at three years, we could not even speak Kiswahili, <laughs> live alone English. Oh, so I've, then seen, now, I've seen even the normal, in quotes, yeah, kids, normal. normal kids who at three years can't, you know, do the things because, you know, I've interacted with Gigi, you mm -hmm. know, on very few occasions, yes, but I could tell mm -hmm. she's one intelligent girl. Speaking of intelligence, when did you decide to take Gigi to school? And um, how did you make that decision, you know, considering the fact that uh, n not all teachers, so to say, can yeah. handle her, mm -hmm. not every school can accept her. Yeah. You know, how, 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 how was the process until um, you got her to school? 
um, at, at, at two years you would want to color do things she could see other kids carrying bags she wanted to do the same and I was like you you have to walk so then I'm scouting out for schools because uh, this is a kid I've built her confidence to a certain level then you're taking her to normal schools which all of us went to you will have teachers who are not compassionate about such kids and that is the big challenge we have in our society that we don't have uh, not so many schools are, um, are accommodative of kids with special needs not yeah. all schools yeah. uh, save for a few or rather if you're taking this to a, a special yeah. school I wanted you to be in a normal school and feel normal and mm. do normal things like other kids I didn't want to bind her to this kind of special because really she's she's extra she does it i fail where to categorize her <laughs> so then um, i was scouting for schools then um, i schools on my list i was like it's going to be a hard challenge because i wanted a school whereby you would go and feel comfortable feel at home feel accommodated because she's a kid who loves um, who is full of love my kid loves hugs she loves to say sorry you know she loves affirmations so then she want to be in an environment where if she does a mistake you point it out she's able to say sorry and you're able to impress her positively because if you don't then she feels she's so emotional then i wanted a place whereby her emotions and everything of us will be catered for without her feeling different so then came uh, fairmont international school so then you know here in kisi it, it's a new thing it's a yeah. new school then uh, it comes with expenses she's still on medication you're fixing this holistically so i went to that school i found good teachers who are very accommodative my name is linda rob i am the crash house unit director and i'm gianna's teacher my name is miss veronica i'm a kindergarten teacher pp1 teacher that means pre primary one teacher i deal with these young ones I met Gigi when she came for an interview. She came with her mother and because I was going to handle her in my class, I had to she had to meet the teacher. The first time I met Gigi, I saw a very jovial girl. Despite her challenges, she was very warm. She even recalled me. She then told me, "I remember you. I know you. You are Miss Vero because we had once met." The mother had uh, walked us through her condition and what she had been through with Gigi. So we knew how we were what we were expecting. But for us we had a very different expectation because when you're told oh there's this child who has um, an over uh, a head uh, the, her head is not the normal size. We were thinking uh, she's special. We were thinking that uh, it would be you know like a struggle for her to connect with everyone but when she walked in she was a bubbly self she asked so many questions she was happy she was in touch with everyone she was so happy and for me we connected because we played we started by playing and interacting and um, we did our interview on the carpet and basically she answered all questions so she was very confident from day one and we just connected with her she was she knew she knew me even before she met me and we had a connection from there so as she came to my class Gigi is very loving very hard working very courteous she loves everyone she must use her polite words whenever she asks for something she's very helpful very caring oh Gigi she's a very great girl uh, my name is Kenneth Wawero. Uh, I'm currently the school accountant. Uh, when Gigi was coming to this school, I was acting as both the, you know, the school accountant and the assistant administrator. So I'm the very person who actually registered Gigi into this school. Okay. Uh, I can say I was among the first two people that Gigi met for the first time. Uh, meeting Gigi for the first time together with the mommy and, uh, and a colleague, Sen, it was a wonderful thing, I must say. Yeah. All right. I remember on the first day talking to mommy, wanting to know how, she, how it has been, you know, because I met her at the age of three years. So I really wanted to know how the journey has been. Okay? I was interested from the word go. Uh, 
for me, what the mummy told me really encouraged me as a person. And uh, from that moment, we became good friends with Dee. All right? I remember after her coming to school for a period of one month, I met the mummy again. And I told her, you know what? I am a parent myself. I have one son who is currently 1.5. Back then, probably he was a few months old. I remember telling mommy that uh, as we are waiting for our sons to grow up, you know, build their career for us, for them to make us proud as parents. But for you, your daughter is making you proud from the word go. So for me, if you ask me about Jay, I'm looking at that child who has managed to make the, everyone around her proud from the word go at her age. All right? I really don't have what to describe her. She's just a blessing. Yeah. Yes. That question can really make me a bit emotional because first I want to be Gianna's friend for life. Okay. I want to be I want to be by, by her side because from now, from the many days we have interacted with her, I can tell she's already a star. I would like to be associated with a star, you know. Uh, Gianna, I want you to know that at the age of four, at the age of four currently, there's a person who has already seen a big potential in you. All right? There's already a person who can see a star, not because of anything, not because of whatever they are calling a but because you have a special thing that comes from you. I know I'm not the only one who holds those kind of opinions, but you know what? You're a star. You know what? You're going places. I'm sticking by your side today, tomorrow, and forever. Thanks, my friend, Diana. Was, was Fairmont your first choice? Was it the first choice, or did you try some other institutions for you to settle? Uh, if, on Fairmont? You can imagine when this school came to Kisi, this kid had not even uh, reached the age of going to school, but I went there to see it crash. So I took her to school so that um, I wanted that by the time she's getting to PP1, her muscles and everything, she's, she's, she has learned the school setup, environment, she can protect herself, she can do a few things on her own. So then I took her last year, September, and uh, surprisingly, her performance was good. First time in school. Then she got, she has very nice teachers, very accommodative. Everybody in the school is very accommodative. Mm -hmm. So then her unit teacher who is Miss Linda, she's so warm in the sense that she will tell me like, uh, she doesn't want to force Gianna to do things. It's a kid you don't force things to do. You don't force things on her. Even in the house, mm -hmm. she chooses what to eat and when. She's so specific about what she wants, even how she dresses mm -hmm. or how she wants to take a bath. Mm -hmm. So some people will think it's spoiling a kid, but I don't think so. Is it really that, that she No, some will be, will be like, ah, giving a kid uh, uh, like space to choose things for herself. That is, you know, mm -hmm. but then, like I said, it's something I, I, I always want to make up for the lost time. So I'll always give her freedom. At the same time, I punish G, but some people don't believe that I'll punish that kid. They feel like she's not supposed to be punished. I'm like, she's a normal kid. She needs to go through everything. So she knows this is wrong and this is a mistake I'm punishing. And we're cool. After the punishment, she will say, sorry, mommy, give me a hug. And then we're friends. We're back to normal like nothing happened. And what impressed me most and what stood out for me in our first term, because I'm looking forward to her results this end of this term. Uh, there's one she's called excellent that was respect for others Don when did you know to respect others at what age uh, <laughs> first I clearly don't want to answer that question <laughs> so respect for others she had excellent that's her one and then I'm like okay as in what is this so going to school to collect her result, the teacher was like, there's something about G that is different. Like, Winnie, what different are you doing? Because uh, there's a way G will walk to class. It's not who she is or what she is. It's not her condition. But it's the way when she walks to class, that class feels warm. She has a listening ear to everybody and everyone. She loves to make peace. So then I didn't have an answer give Miss Linda. I just told her I was told to give my all. So in our house it's about love, forgiveness. If you mess you get punished for your mistake. 
but you are given room to be better so holistically but holistically our home is love so somebody who doesn't understand it because you will come out of that place and say i love you and then you're like this kid has been told stay with her you will understand that that's our language yeah she loves hugs affirmation so i found a school that is warm that is accommodative that is welcoming uh, people say kila mtu kuja na sani yake na kuna wale wakuji na sani so i will i will say jana came with a plate already like god had a plan about Gigi that i was not privy to because okay. i can tell you up to this time like when i started selling like uh, financially i was trained in everything mm-hmm. since then up to this time now ronnie can tell you we've never lacked not one bit you will sit you're like eh, 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 apa how am i going to fix this then just something just comes so like g came with so much blessing mm-hmm. that i know she is their kids i know friends she has taught confidence their mm-hmm. kids would not talk mm-hmm. but by interacting with gigi mm-hmm. they have you know what they, they have their confidence is up there so she's also friendly to the classmates and do her yeah. classmates understand yes the, I, the, the, there's yeah way. there's some who understand it okay you cannot say all cuz yeah, i've yeah. not been in a class fully mm-hmm. but i know for sure that gigi is accommodative mm-hmm. she's keen she wants others to listen to instructions so she's on a medication when she misses she can be off a bit okay what do you mean by off for someone who doesn't understand uh for someone who doesn't understand like she's on supplements from day one so these supplements you don't mix with other drugs if she has a flu she will take the medication for flu then you give her a break of two days then you roll back to what she takes so amidst this she can be very temperamental in the sense that you tell her no and she wants something so bad she can be unruly she can bite you she can throw things she can shout so but that extreme happens when she has missed she has she had uh, she has missed her drugs but when she's on the right track then she's we are cool okay so what do the drugs like help uh, about her or rather what do mm. they do that she constantly needs now? i think um from the advice of the doctors her bones had not stabilized mm-hmm. there's some uh, uh, nutritious like in the sense that um, she didn't know how to feed like well or maybe her feedings will change there are those that replen- uh, replenish the nerves and what have you mm-hmm. so they play quite a role it, mm-hmm. no no not one it's because there are three of them okay so they, they each plays a different role but holistically they help in her development because then you know when you look at her so now this is the normal bit when you look at her uh, a 9 month a 9 month term baby that's a term baby and a preterm baby there will be a bit of uh, uh, like in terms of body size in terms of milestones that's where the difference comes in yeah so has her milestones are a bit slower than but her brain is way ahead than her body that i can affirm yeah cuz her body is slow again a challenge she has is her body is slower than her brain cuz the brain processes things faster than the body so then um, she needs like if you're having an activity tomorrow you have to prepare her today you have to tell her tomorrow we're going like this like she ha- she must have a routine of things so like she knows she's waking up for school and our waking time is 6 6:30. Jenna will automatically wake up at 6:30 without an alarm. Without an alarm. Her? Yeah, sometimes she wakes me up and tell me, "Mommy, wake you wake your time for school." Oh, really? Yeah, so then you have to tell her things in advance because then tomorrow might reach she wants to do something badly and you want to change it. It might not be nice. So far, what can you say is your up until now that mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. your most maybe fond memory or moment. Mm-hmm of you and Gigi all the the whole journey up until now. Oh, I, every day is a favorite. <laughs> every day is a favorite. <laughs> Cuz you know sometimes she wake up like um I'll, I'll choose specific ones. Mm-hmm. Um she knows my birthday. <laughs> and she will sing for me. Uh, she's aware of Mother's Day. So the last mother mother's day she was telling me she wants to take me for an ice cream date. A 
and I take off for a chicken and chips date. You see, ice cream and then chips and chicken. chicken yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that was beautiful because um, she remembered and she's aware of Valentine's Day. Can you imagine? So she made a card at school. I th their school is good in the sense that it allows kids to be them, like holistic. It's a school that nurtures them holistically. And it comes like a package that has, you know, like a camera when you have a tripod, you're having a, the batteries, you have everything in check. Yeah. So it's a school that has all, has all that. So Valentine's Day, she comes with a card. And she's like, Mommy, happy Valentine. I drew a heart for you. So it feels emotions and what have you. Then comes Mother's Day. So she's like, she has to take me on an ice cream date. So I became so like, I want to rest a bit. She insisted we had to, to get out of the house. I didn't want to get out of the house. So we went, I got her the chicken and the chips. I have a video for that. And then we went for ice cream. Then we went home and she was happy. So I think it's uh, that one, it's the icing on the cake. So let, let's say the icing on the cake because <laughs> the emotions are many, yeah. the moments are many. So you, it's like you're baking a cake, mm -hmm. but then there's the icing on the cake that makes it, you know, sparkle. It's sweet, yes, but first impression when you're seeing a cake, it's the decoration. So that stood out for me that she, at barely, not yet four years, she was able to, Know, Mother's Day that yeah. mommy needs a treat. Mommy needs to be reminded that she's special. <laughs> yes, even if it is on my bill, it has to. <laughs> because she says I have to give her money. Her, my money is her money. So I don't know what I would love to say is um, these conditions are different and we are all different emotionally, socially, financially and mentally. But uh, what I would love to say, because we're in a society that is very judgmental, you do good, people will still talk. You do bad, they will still talk. Same to these medical conditions. Somebody will just say, what did this woman do? You know, it, 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 yeah, when uh, a kid has a medical condition, it all narrows down to the woman. You know, we, we are judged harshly and uh, it's not so nice because today it might be me, tomorrow will be you and yours might be worse than mine. So th that's why you realize that many, many parents who have special needs kids, they have hidden them and it's not fair. When you look at it because uh, these kids according to me and from my experience is these kids have so much potential than what people call normal you can be having a blind child but the iq and what he would have done if you brought imora out there is more great than you hiding because i've seen this case in uh, the last surgery was done in kijabe so kijabe they usually do round round clinics within kisi across the country you will have mothers and look at them. It's like they are carrying the entire world on their backs. You, you, you don't have to, to ask them, but you can see and feel it. Because in, in, in I feel like this mama has all the, the, the world's problems. She's not comfortable. She's not free. They're like, how will people look at my kid? Then it narrows down. You'll find this mama is depressed. And she doesn't know. So you will find this kid is not dressed well or not cleaned up well because you have kids who have a hydrocephalus, we are having spina bifida, we are having cerebral palsy, we have a cleft palate, all, all sorts of things. Because I remember there, is, uh, there are some women who asked me that, are you sure Jenna is sick? I told them yes, she has a shunt. But she's okay. And then I'm like, you know, the level of acceptance as a parent matters that this is my child this is my situation i'm gonna pick it from here it's not about the 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 the, the, the society it's not about the because you'll find most of them the husbands are not there and then some people are not lucky to get the support the right support system or they will not have somebody walk into their life and give them the support like some of us would have a support system that, you know, you can count on this person. You can do one, two, three, four, five, six. So then uh, they are like, people are seeing me. So you'll end up depressed. You will, you, you will end up with a miserable life, I can say. Because uh, like I said earlier on, God gives you some stone. Some will 
put it in uh, like a, like, a, like an attraction like a decoration some will tuck it in like a treasure and someone will just try to break it and see what good can i make out of this stone so my opinion will be like if, if, if we could rich parents out there or parents out there would embrace their kids embrace the condition of these kids it's not about society you know once you do that and accept trust you Miron God will fix things you thought will never be fixed by even a doctor because I've seen it personally because you'll have kids who have um, who have hydrocephalus some of them their heads are still big some cannot sit some cannot walk you get but my Gigi has walked she's going to school I, I narrow it down to my acceptance level because God can't give you what you can't handle so there's a way he cannot take away everything but there's a way he makes this burden lighter by fixing one two three four five things but when you you're like you're rigid kind of you know you will stay like this because you know you you don't have you don't know how to to stretch these hands of yours. The only way you know and you know it better is how do I fold these hands away from people. And I would love to say that parents who have kids with special needs, post your kid, be proud, walk with them, put them out there, take them to school, let them live a normal life. You know, because then you would have given them the freedom to be themselves rather than hiding them in the house. It's not, it's not good because in our society, Kwanzaa, Kissy, let me just narrow it down to kissy. Eh, hey, people have opinions out here. Me, I've seen opinions. <laughs> I've encountered them, but again, they don't get to me. Because I know maybe there is a reason. I've I've not put it down holistically, but there's a reason why God gave me Gigi. There's a reason. Purely, I can tell you for free. And it's now that I'm seeing it. Then I was like, this kid has to be okay. I just didn't know why God gave me this kid, but maybe right now I'm seeing the reasons. Uh, there's something that people don't understand, and especially people who do not have exposure, you know. There's something called human diversity, you know, the fact that all of us, we are different. Uh, you find that not even in terms of disability or what you may call it, we are created differently. For example, we have Africans, we have Asians, we have Americans. You know, all those things, they make us different somehow, all right? And uh, that's what we call human diversity. So, us as a society first, even before I talk about parents who have those kind of children, it's for us to know that aspect of human diversity, of, uh, of uh, human life, you know? The human diversity. The moment you understand that aspect, then you embrace everyone you meet on your way. You get that? Uh, about parents who have this kind of children, we understand, especially in an African setup, you know, the challenges that you go through. But first and foremost is to know that this is your child, all right? Your child did not choose to have whatever they have. I, I may call it a disability for now, allow me to use that word. They did not choose to have the disability. You as a parent, you also did not choose to have a child with a disability, all right? So it's for you to embrace this child just like any other child, treat them right, bring them the best way you can. You know what? Other than even parenting, everything that you do, I believe, do it to the best of your knowledge. So that even if something goes wrong, you sit back and say, you know what, I did the best I could. Uh, I think Mama Diana, she has, shown, she has shown the society a very good example, you know. Uh, bringing your child out here regardless. And I can tell you, Diana, she's way much ahead of her, her class. That one I can tell you for sure. So these are very good examples. So my advice to the parent will be, please, just a child like any other, you know. Just the same way we have short children, tall, big, and slim, you know. Just bring them out here. Let them interact. That one is going to help them a lot, a lot. I can tell you that from experience. Of course, in this school, it's not just Diana. We have others, all right? They come in in the same way. And by the time we are two, three months down the line, then they're totally different, all right? So I'll encourage them. Just, you know, take them out there. Not just school. Let them go swim. Let them go play, you know. Let them interact with their neighbors. Let them go to family gatherings here. That helps a lot. It's, it's a, it's a, let's, um, let's try to impress this. Let's try to be all of us present in these kids' lives. And uh, let's tell our people out there that it's okay not to be okay. Your okay might not be mine, but let's learn to be okay. And uh, raise these kids and give them the amenities that they deserve. Because you realize um, 
in the facilities that we have don't cater for they cater for normal like i put it you will have kids who are on wheelchairs who are this this you'll have to struggle to find a school maybe in nairobi in wherever so i'm i'm looking forward to a society that is um, inclusive a society that can can accommodate all this because i might be well off i might afford to take my kid to nairobi but i have a parent who is unable can't take a kid there so let's try to if we can we can try and bring this out and help these kids out there will be good yeah